In this captivating episode, we will be delving into the chilling and tragic case of Nitisha Lattimore and her three-year-old son Nilo, who were brutally killed by Nitisha's boyfriend Deshaun Brown in December 2020. Nitisha Lattimore was a 29-year-old mother of two who lived in a Walnut Hills apartment in Cincinnati, Ohio. She had a 10-year-old daughter and a 3-year-old son named Nilo. Nilo was a sweet and adorable boy who loved Paw Patrol and Spider-Man. He was described by his family as the ball of joy. Wave, say hi. Say bye-bye. had been dating Deshaun Brown, a 22-year-old man, for about a year. Brown was not Nilo's biological father but claimed to love Nitisha and her children. However, behind the scenes, he was hiding a dark and twisted motive for killing them. According to the police, Brown had planned for months to kill Nitisha because he blamed her for having a miscarriage. He believed that she had killed his baby so he wanted to do something to her baby, Nilo. He also wanted to get rid of any evidence that could link him to the crime. On December 5, 2020, Brown stabbed Nitisha to death in her apartment. He then left her body there for at least five days, while he accessed her phone and posted on her Facebook account to make it seem like she was still alive. He also ordered a body bag online and searched for cleaning products and bridges in Cincinnati. On December 11, 2020, Brown carried Nitisha's body in the body bag through the hallway of her apartment building and called an Uber to drive him to the Ohio River. He told the driver that the bag contained some clothes. He then tried to throw Nitisha's body into the river near the Purple People Bridge. However, he did not succeed in disposing of her body completely. The next day, on December 12, 2020, a security guard found Nitisha's body on Pete Rose Way in downtown Cincinnati. She had multiple stab wounds and defensive injuries on her hands. Her blood was also found on a Paw Patrol blanket that was recovered with her body. The police arrested Brown on the same day and charged him with murder. They also discovered that he had killed Nilo as well. They found Nilo's blood on Brown's clothes and in his car. They also found Nilo's stroller near the river where Brown had dumped his mother's body. The police believe that Brown threw Nilo into the river while he was still alive on December 6, 2020, just one day after he killed Nitisha. They think that he did this to eliminate any witnesses and to hurt Nitisha even more. They also think that he chose the river because it was deep and fast-flowing. Unfortunately, Nilo's body has never been found despite extensive searches by the police and volunteers. The police have used sonar equipment, divers, drones, helicopters, and dogs to look for him in the river and along its banks. They have also offered a $10,000 reward for any information that could lead to his recovery. Brown has been indicted on two counts of aggravated murder, one count of murder, one count of tampering with evidence, one count of gross abuse of a corpse, and one count of endangering children. He is facing the death penalty if convicted. A man accused of killing a mother and her three-year-old son Nilo appears in court. Today's hearing came after Deshaun Brown's defense team requested a reduction in his bond. Brown was charged with their murders in December 2020. Yeah, Kendall Hyde join us, joins us from the Hamlin County Courthouse downtown. Rob, just Judge Megan Shanahan describes Brown as not only a threat to the community, but also to Nilo and Atisha's family members. Now, many of these details that we have in the story have been previously reported. However, we're just now learning of a possible motive. Allegedly, Natisha had been pregnant um, earlier, maybe in July of that year, by Mr. Brown. Uh, Natisha had had a miscarriage, and then Mr. Brown had told Jamisha Cobb that he was very upset. He thought that she killed their baby, and he was going to do something to her baby, Nyla. Jamisha Cobb is a close friend to Brown, so when she learned that he had been arrested, she shared that information with police about the 2020 death of Nitisha and Nilo Lattimore. Police say on December 12th, a security guard found Nitisha Lattimore's body in a white body bag on the bank of the Ohio River near the Purple People Bridge. Police say her body had multiple stab wounds to her chest and neck, but Nilo was nowhere to be found. The next day, family members went to the bridge to create a memorial and spotted a stroller that looked like Nilo's. Police confirmed that the stroller did in fact belong to the three-year-old 
Road. After finding Natisha's body in Nilo's stroller, police stopped by her home, where they found Brown. There were multiple um, items removed the apartment. There were multiple areas that were swabbed. There was blood visible um, on the wall and on some lines in, in the bedroom, and that was taken. I do want to give you another warning that some of these details are a bit graphic. The Hamilton County Coroner's Office swabbed the blood that they found in the home and said it did in fact belong to Natisha. Neighbors say they heard screams the night of December 5th when authorities say Natisha was killed. The neighbor who lives below Natisha's apartment in apartment number three on December the 5th, she had contacted the maintenance person for their building and there was some what she described as a brownish red colored water that was coming um, through her ceiling leaking into her apartment from the apartment upstairs. The Hamilton County Coroner's Office swabbed the blood that was found in the home and said it belonged to Natisha. And once again, these details are graphic. We had a criminalist come out at that point and she swabbed this part in the ceiling that was in the apartment below where the water had been coming from. And the woman who lives there actually kept the pot. The criminalist swabbed the pot as well. And we sent that off to the Hamilton County Crime Lab for analysis. And did that come back to Natisha Lattimore's blood as well? Yes, it did. His trial is scheduled to start in August 2022. This case has sparked outrage and grief among the public and the families of the victims. Nitesha's daughter has been placed in foster care while her relatives are fighting for custody. Nilo's biological father, Tonio Hughes, has expressed his anger and pain over losing his son. He even attacked Brown in court during a hearing in June 2021. One of the most heartbreaking moments, in this case, was when Nilo's biological father, Tonio Hughes, confronted Brown in court on June 23, 2021. A shocking video captured Hughes's raw emotion and rage as he attacked Brown during a hearing on a defense motion to throw out his taped confession to the police. Hughes was seen charging at Brown and punching him several times in the head before deputies restrained him. Hughes was handcuffed and surrounded by three deputies, but he still managed to pursue Brown until four officers wrestled him to the ground. Hughes was held in contempt and sentenced to jail for seven days. Hughes had reported Nilo missing on December 11, 2020, stating that he last saw Nilo on December 4. He said that there was no reason for Brown to kill his son and that he felt betrayed by Nitisha's trust in him. He also said that he wanted his son home and that he wanted a proper burial for him. He had been searching for Nilo for months, hoping to find him alive or at least recover his body. He had been cooperating with the police and the volunteers, offering any information and assistance he could. He had been holding on to his faith and his love for his son. But when he saw Brown in court, the man who had taken away his son and his son's mother, he snapped. He could not contain his grief and anger any longer. He could not bear to see Brown's face or hear his voice. He could not stand the injustice and the cruelty of what Brown had done. He wanted to make Brown pay for his crimes. He wanted to make Brown feel the pain he felt. While some people might condemn Hughes for his violent behavior, Others might sympathize with him and understand his actions. They might imagine how they would feel if they were in his shoes. They might wonder how they would cope with such a devastating loss. They might question how they would react if they faced the person who had destroyed their family. Hughes's attack on Brown was not an act of revenge or hatred, but an act of desperation and despair. It was an expression of his unbearable sorrow and frustration. It was a cry for help and justice. It was a sign of his humanity. I do not condone violence, but I do empathize with Hughes. I do not judge him, but I do support him. I do not blame him, but I do pray for him. I hope that he can find some peace and healing in this dark time and can see his son again someday. Many people have also shown their support and sympathy for Nitisha and Nilo by holding vigils, donating money, sending cards, and wearing purple ribbons. Purple was Nilo's favorite color. Some people have also called for justice and reform in the criminal justice system and the child welfare system. It is hard to imagine how someone could be so cruel and evil to kill a mother and her innocent child in such a brutal way. It is also sad that Nilo's body has not been found yet and that his family has not been able to give him a proper burial. I hope that this case will be resolved soon and that Brown will be held accountable for his actions. They deserve justice and respect. As we conclude this video, we would like to express our sincere sympathy to Nitisha Lattimore's daughter, who has lost her mother and brother in such a horrific way. She is only 10 years old and has been placed in foster care while her relatives are fighting for custody. She has been through so much and yet she still manages to smile and be kind to others. She is a remarkable young girl who deserves all the love and support she can get. We hope Nitisha Lattimore continues to rest in peace.
May Naitisha Lattimore's story inspire us to be vigilant, compassionate, and committed to ending violence in all its forms. In loving memory Naitisha Lattimore forever in our hearts.